Hey everybody, let me just check and see if this is working. It's working! Hey everybody, we are here in the glaze kitchen and I just wanted to give you a, an idea not only of the three glazes that we've just started using and including a rebate, but the other variety of glazes that we have here. So you can be thinking in the future about how you might want to have things glazed with high fire. This, this little quick talk is all about high fire glazes and what you see down here are the 10 different fire fire glazes that we have here in the studio, right? And for example, this is Temaku, and you can see that everything is pure water on top until you mix it. And all these things, once they get mixed up, then we dip the glaze, and this after it's been dipped, looks like this, right? So that is nothing like the final example, which you saw, which goes from brown to black, but None of the glazes look exactly like they're supposed to look here in this form, but only later. Now I want you to see over here, and this is what a bunch of people did today when they came in and dropped off work, is they came over here and straight on, face on like this, they took a really high resolution picture with their, cam with their camera from their phone, and then you take that home and you download it onto your screen and you can then focus on any one area of that. And I want to show you how to read it, right? So it's a really cool chart and we'll go over and look. So let's walk over here. <clears throat> now, you might notice at first that here's the basic glazes, clear, cream white, celadon, chino, copper red, butter, temaku, gold chino, iron saturate, and Charlie D. White. Those are just simple names of the glazes and they're pretty standard glazes. And every single one of these test tiles has a dark side and a light side. That's because this side here had a white slip put on it. And that just shows you what any glaze will look like if, it, if it's either on a porcelain or it has a white or a porcelain slip put on it so that it's white. And this side over here is an iron bearing clay. In other words, the clay has some iron in it and so it's a little brown. So every one of these tiles was first made and bisque fired and had slip put on one side and no slip on the other. So an iron bearing clay with white. What that does is it shows you what a glaze is going to look like on porcelain or what a glaze is going to look like on an iron bearing clay and they look really different. So now that's what clear looks like all by itself. One dip and two dips. Each one of these, each one of these was dipped once in this glaze, and then after it dried, it was dipped again, right? So one dip and two dips. So there's clear all by itself with one dip and two dip on a porcelain clay and an iron bearing clay. So let's stop that from wiggling. Here is cream white dipped once and twice. Here is celadon dipped once and dipped twice. You see the difference, dramatic difference from the left, what it looks like on porcelain as opposed to what it looks like on that. Here is Shino, the one that we were looking at. Shino dipped once and twice. And you can see as it's dipped twice on the top that it gets uh, lighter and it's darker on the bottom. Copper red is you know, it looks a little bit different when it's thinner. When it gets thicker, it's kind of all bets are off. And butter, um, and it tends to move. So this is, these were fired sitting up the way you see them. So if it moves and drips, you can say, oh, that's a glaze, I need to watch out for that because maybe it moves. Here's Temaku, right? And you can see where it's thin here, it's browner, and here it was a thicker application. And this is another kind of variation on Chino called Gold Chino and it has a quite a little different look than the more traditional chino. But again, looks different on the porcelain as opposed to the other. And finally, iron saturate, which is a, a kind of a, a cousin of Timaku with a lot of iron oxide in it, and it looks quite different, right? And then last, Charlie D. White. So those are all the glazes all by themselves, dipped singly or dipped with a double thickness, so you can see what they look like. So have a look back at this. Now what I want to show you now is what each of them look like. Here's clear, 
And then this represents clear with cream white over it. Here's clear with celadon over it. Here's clear with chino over it. Ooh, bubbling, not so good. Here's clear with copper red over it, etc. So these are all the glazes in a line with the others over it. Here's again cream white with every single glaze over it, right? So, and you get to, you can see each of them glazes and what happens when you put something else over it. Celadon with cream white over it. Celadon with just celadon. Celadon with chino. Anytime you see chino, see how it bubbles a little bit? And chino notoriously doesn't like to be on top of another glaze. So we're going all the way over there. Okay, so the moral of the story is that I want you to be able to have a picture of this um, chart and be able to look at it and say, oh, okay, now I, I, in the future, you'll maybe have a piece and you'll say, I want it, can, you, can we please have it glazed with this glaze with that one over it and we'll figure out a way to make it happen. So you need to have a picture of this and be able to make it big. Um, I want to show you one last thing about here. Hmm. Let's go up here to cream white and oh, that's gold chino. Cream white and chino on top. There's cream white and chino on top, and it's kind of kind of dingy looking in my estimation. Um, and then if you go chino and cream white you get this amazing thing, right? So, the idea here is you have two different glazes that are, that are lit. Here's chino with cream white over it. Here's cream white with chino over it. And they look completely different. And one, so you might say, I really like this up here, I want that to happen. That would mean you need to be careful that you first put chino on and then put cream white over the top. Here, and this all bubbles up, it's not quite the same. So there are some beautiful examples up here, and there's also some real disasters, and some exa examples of what a lot of people would say, well, that's kind of ugly. So it's important to like, next time you're in here, to come take a picture or freeze frame this and focus in on certain areas, and you can look and see what specifically you think would be a really cool glaze at high fire. Okay, that's how you read the board. And you guys will be coming in to pick up your first pieces, and we're just going to keep going from there. All right, talk to you later. Bye.